Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to An Elegant Weapon, episode 375. My name is J.J.M. J. M. Clark, J. the Jedi, Ross, Ross, Jedi, J. And as always, it is so wonderful to have all you beautiful babies here with us in the Smoking Pod studio tonight on the show. A very, very good friend of ours. I don't even know how to describe her because there are so many wonderful ways to do so. I don't know really how to exactly describe what she does because there are so many wonderful things that she does do. So, ladies and gentlemen, long overdue, coming to an elegant weapon, Miss Joey Pangalinen. How are you, Joey? I'm really good now that you introed me that way. Did I seem like so much more important than I actually am. Oh, no, you're important. Okay, kids, we just have to quickly do the awkward thing. Yeah. It's uh, awkward. Where you hear that? You hear me? Did you hear me talking double there? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm sorry. The Zoom thing, when I when Facebook comes up, and this has been happening, and I've been trying to figure it out, and I think maybe it's because I've been leaving the share on, so it's good that you didn't hear it that time. But when I click to expand the window, I can hear myself talking in my headphones, and then it confuses oh, yeah, like me. This, 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 this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, but anyways, that's over with. We got this up. We got this ready to roll. Uh, like I was just saying, it's been far too long. Um, I yeah. met you kind of through podcasting in a way back in mm. the day uh, when you were involved with Comics Inc. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, um, you were, I looked at you as like the Joe Rogan of comics. Was that was that right? Is that still I think that's still very right. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he's he's accomplished a great many things. Um, but I think I was just in there early. And I think I got to stand out and stick out because of that. I mean, I've been doing it nine years now, right? This show has been running. Yeah, like this started back in 2011. Oh my god, I was still in college. It was it was like the tail end of 2011 and I and me and my buddy just started this up. So yeah, this is episode 375. Oh my god, that's and I'm on episode five of Heroes Manufactured Comic Vault. <laughs> Which is super awesome, you know, and we're gonna get to that because I need you to explain a lot about what's yeah. going on with all the madness over there as well. Yeah. But it, yeah, no, we had some similarities because you were kind of doing exactly what I did. I started a podcast and then I started getting to know people in the community, going to shows yeah. and, you know, getting tight with shops and, you know, starting to get involved with, you know, just trying to help out and spread the word and spread the love. And yeah, and then I, I ran along into you. What spurred that on for you? What made you, you yeah. know, what sparked the motivation to start trying all this stuff for you? Well, to be honest, I, it was a co uh, an episode of Comic Book Men, you know? And really? Yeah, it was. And um, I mean, I love Clerks. You know, I love stuff that like Kevin Smith does. And when I started watching Comic Book Men, the most favorite thing that I loved about that show was friends geeking out with friends. You know, Walt, Ming Chen, Brian Johnson, they all just kind of they it was literally it was literally like hanging out in a comic book shop every single time you watch that show but like not the front of the comic the, the comic book shop it's more like at the back where they back and board because that's where all the shit talk happens yeah that's all you know? where chitter chatter goes exactly. on yeah absolutely yeah, and there's uh, a bit of sorry go on no no and it, and it was just an, an inspiration because I was like well why can't I have friends like that you know like why can't I do that? And it's because I've been, I was in the corporate world for so long that I just got, you know, distant with the community. And I, I just, I needed to get it back. And I needed to basically give back to a community that's always given so much to me. Oh, well, that's such a, ah. a sweet, pure hearted reason to get reinvolved, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, well, we, there's even more you know, similar inspiration there because I started this podcast because of listening to Kevin Smith constantly tell me to start a podcast. Really? Because, well, you know, I was a big fan back then. Me and my buddy, we listened to Joe Rogan and it was yeah. like the big four or five back then. It was Joe Rogan. It was Kevin yeah. Smith. It was oh. Mark Marin. It uh -huh. was Chris Hardwick on The Nerdist. Yes. And, you know, that was basically like your big four back in like, you know, 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Smith never stopped talking about starting a podcast and how easy it was and how anybody could do it. Right. And everybody yeah. should do it. So I was like, I could do it too. So yeah, yeah. You know, I did. And then I took a crazy shot 
um, episode 25 of mm. An Elegant Weapon. If anybody wants to go back and listen, it's still there. But awesome. I took a crazy shot on Twitter where people were talking about who they'd like to have on their podcast. Just mm-hmm. dream guest type stuff, right? And I was big into, you know, all of the View Askew, View Askew Universe for years. So I was familiar with a lot of Kevin Smith and all those guys on Comic Book Men, like years previous to the show coming out. Mm-hmm. And I was always a huge fan of Mike Zapson. Oh, and yeah. I was just like, man, could you imagine sitting around talking comic books with that guy? Like that oh, would be God. incredible. So yeah. I tweet, I tweeted that just, you know, as people were talking in the middle of a conversation, but I tagged him in it and he tweeted me back and he said, where and when? <gasps> and I was like, Fuck I gotta off. Go back. no way. So he, he Skyped in and he was on episode 25 of an elegant weapon which was a huge boost for me. That's really what got me on the board. What got me on the board was having Mike Zapsik and having that talk. And then it got to my hundredth episode Mm -hmm. and I, I hit him up again and I was like, uh, it's a hundredth episode. We kind of made it, you know, and a lot of it was thanks to you. Do you want to come back on? And he was like, sure. So he came back on for the hundredth episode. Right. Then the 200th episode, I happened to be in Michigan for Motor City Comic Con. Sick, yeah. And he's there because uh, Ming's a Michigan native. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so he's always there. So he's always at Motor City and he brought Zapsic with him. So Podcast, Podcast Detroit, one of uh, my networks that I have been involved with, mm-hmm. they set up live there and do live you know, shows and streaming and stuff. So I recorded my 200th episode live from Motor City Comic Con with Ming Chen and Michael Zapsic, right? You're so lucky. So, hold on. Then we roll around episode 300. And that's when I take the big shot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going for it. Because what's the worst this guy can say no is, is no, right? So I hit up my podcasting hero of all time, Ralph Garman, oh, who does Hollywood Babylon with Kevin uh-huh. Smith, right? And now the Ralph report. And I sent him an email just out of the blue. I sent an email and I explained who I was, what I was doing. And it'd be an honor to just get him on for like 10 minutes. And the same thing. He wrote me back and said, where and when? Let's do it. And he came on the show and he ended up giving me almost half an hour. We we talked for like 20, 25 minutes. And it was incredible, you know, and it was like a dream come true. So even me in my own little podcasting world have so oh so much to them and that thing that they've all started right back down to kevin smith right Mm -hmm. so and and same thing with you it it reignited a a spark in you you know what i mean how were comics always a part of your life though yeah absolutely you know like like i when i was when i was 17 i did the thing that a lot of girls do they got a tramp stamp and you And it's a Superman one, you know, it's like, and then my mom found out and she was just like, I knew you would get this. So instead of getting pissed, really, she was just like, I knew it. I, this was the thing you were going to get, but it's a Superman one. And why I got it actually was because even as a kid, you know, moving from one country to another, moving from one city to another, he always had my back, you know, good times and in bad, whether I was watching him in Justice League Unlimited, whether I was watching him in the Taz whether I was reading some sort of a comic book, it was always going to be Superman. So, but to be honest though, the first comics that I've ever really had was really ratted up Fantastic Four comics. And you know, when you're driving up to Niagara Falls yeah. and like the, the shipwreck looking pirate ship thing. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the, her, my, the Hermione. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a secondhand store of random trinkets there. And that's where I found Fantastic Four comics. I know the place you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an antique shop type thing. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And so that's kind of where the addiction really started. But I think um, as far as pop culture, it was actually more toys because I was I grew up with my uncles. So instead of ants babysitting me, it was always usually uncles. And guess what? They love Transformers. Right, right. They loved okay. anything that loved any robot kind of things. They loved like Ultraman. And obviously those are the kind of things that I grew up with rather than the typical My Little Ponies and Care Bears. Awesome. Did you, you mentioned moving countries. What's that all about? I did. Um, so I actually 
I, I'm actually from the Philippines. Um, I, I was born there. And then I came here when I was around eight. Oh, and that heard, old, yeah. Yeah, I lived in Vancouver for a bit. And um, afterwards, we moved to Toronto because my mom was like, wow, it is slow here. <laughs> so this is like 94. And Vancouver was completely like, I mean, it was a metropolis, but it was no like hustle bustle Manila, which right. my mom was used to, right? Right. And so, and we lived more like in, in Richmond, which was even more of a suburban part of Vancouver. And uh, we moved to downtown Toronto. So I grew up at like Bathurst and King, you know? And really? uh, right downtown, eh? Right smack downtown. And the, you know, uh, the Silver Snail was kind of my go to because they were just over at, uh, at Queen. Do you remember when they were back at Queen? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I grew up going there in the 90s myself. Well, everybody did, right? Yeah. It was the spot. It was the cl- I miss it, man. The creaking up those stairs upstairs to yeah. see all the Star Wars stuff because all the comics were downstairs, but all the sci fi was upstairs. I got in so much trouble in Silver Snail. Oh, my God. That was the first time I ever had a debit card, and it was the last time I had a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, debit yes. card. Um, hey man, in those days, Queen Street was a dangerous place to be, man. I mean, there's very few of the shops left that were there in the 90s and stuff. Like, you know, Black Market, I think, is still there. But it's a, it's gotten so modern and trendy. But it was so hip and cool back in the day, you know? Hey man, those were the days of, like, Electric Circus, Speaker's Corner, Ed the Sock. You know, Ed yeah. the Sock is technically the first podcaster, isn't he? Like... <laughs> In a way, although yeah. I've always attributed that to uh, to pump up the volume. Oh my god! Pump up, pump up the volume. Happy yes. hitting hard on Christian Slater. Uh-huh. Oh, that he's god. to me, he's he's the pod father to me. The because pod father, I like it. He he would come to mind back in the day because I would do when the show started. If you listen to a lot of early episodes, they weren't interview episodes for the first like seventy episodes. Uh-huh. It was me and friends just talking shit. Like, mm-hmm. so it was me and my co-host and then other friends would come on and we'd just, you know, we'd geek out and I would go on these rants and they would kind of be nuts. And that was all inspired from just streams of thought, streams of consciousness coming out of my mouth because of, you know, always wanting to do it like he did and like pump up the volume, you know, so just, you know, but then my co-host left and I was like, I can't talk to myself. Well, I could <laughs> easily talk to myself for days, but I do. But uh-huh. as far as recording it, I don't know who'd want to listen. So that's when it kind of became an interview show. And that's when I really started, you know, it, having all these guests on and wonderful people like you to share yeah. in the conversation, you know. Well, were, you always, uh, were you always friends with like all the comic book friends that we have now? No, it... Uh, what it was was it was okay it started in two places me and my buddy who started this show my buddy sean we were friends since we since like grade three so him and i grew up together here in clarkson or sorry over in clarkson in Mm -hmm. mississauga and you know we had similar interests and we were just friends for years so then back in like you know 2011 or whatever we were both podcast fans Mm -hmm. and uh, we were also comic fans because at the same time was the launch of the new 52. Oh, yeah. Okay. This all coincides with the new 52 because mm-hmm. he and I were huge fans of it. Mm-hmm. So the first few episodes of the podcast were a lot of just rambling. But then right away, the new 52 came out and gave us something to start talking about. So we started talking more and more about the comics. Even We already like comics, but it wasn't ever meant to be a comic centric show. It was called oh. An Elegant Weapon because I love lightsabers. Right, right. Right. I'm obsessed with Star Wars and lightsabers, and that's the only reason I named it that. It was never meant to be about comics, but mm. it slowly morphed and got more and more part like pop culture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and but I have we had already been going to Fan Expo mm. since 2004, 2005, mm-hmm. like 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 maybe 15 years I've been going to Fan Expo now. So I started bringing a a recorder with me actually i started with my phone and a mic that plugged into my phone and i was like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna start interviewing people like and you know 2003 though you started doing that no no well i started that's when i started going to comic cons oh okay so when did you do the mic thing probably 2012 oh that makes sense yeah 2012 2013 uh, after years of already been going to comic cons i decided to just start interviewing people and i had already met a bunch of comic and podcasting friends on Twitter. 
Twitter, when I first got on Twitter, when it came out, I met people who are still my best friends to this day. Two in particular, Stan and Josh, if you're out there, shout outs, boys. But those two were first, my like first, two of the first people I met on Twitter. Josh mm-hmm. is in Denver, Stan's in Philly. Stan's actually who uh, is on staff with me and why I'm the panel coordinator for the Great Philadelphia Comic Con. But that's a way longer story for another time. Uh-huh. But that's because we met on Twitter and we became friends on Twitter. And then I started doing the podcast and they were listening to the podcast. And Josh was a podcaster too. And now I run points of interest with him. He's the guy I do two J's right. later with that mm-hmm. podcast. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Sean Daly. Sean Daly. Sean motherfucking Daly. <laughs> I, be- I became friends with him on Twitter. Yeah. And then I knew he was going to be at Fan Expo. So I went planning for him to be my first comic book interview. Okay. And I did. I went. No one knew who he was. No one knew who I was. We we absolutely knew like nobody. He had just given up music to try, start making comic books. And I did had just Austin, started podcasting. I know that. John isn't a lifelong drawer. This is what is even the mo- more, most amazing thing is that he just decided one day about nine years ago to give it a shot. That's the best though. Isn't it like one of those things where you're like, you know what? I'm going to jump. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. But it just turns out he's massively naturally talented at it at the same time. Right. It's like, of course it's Sean Daly. It makes sense. I I don't think he would not succeed at anything he did in life Mm -hmm. and not just succeed, but like (laughs) flourish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's just what I think now. So yeah, I went and interviewed him And then I started meeting other folks. Also, my buddy, Anthony Rutgazer. I -hmm. knew him. He's uh, he does uh, Heroes of Homeroom C comic book. And he did the first hero for Action Lab. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's always tabling at the shows. But I knew him through other friends just coincidentally years before, like 2001. I knew him. Um, And then so I started meeting people. And then I started meeting the classics like Shay, you know, A. Shay Han. And of course, the the, uh, the Black Hole Hunter boys, Shane mm-hmm. and Ricky, right? Yeah. And Sam Noir and uh, all these cats, and you Eight, know all the celebrities right now. Yeah. So I met I met and got to know all these cats, and they're like the most wonderful people. So that's you know how it happened for me. It's kind of the same. It's, I can see that it happened like that for you though too, right? You just started yeah. going to shows, meeting people, right? Yeah, and I'm like. I now a lot of people aren't going to believe this just because of my online presence, but I am an actual introvert. Okay, like <laughs> I want you to believe that because I'm one of these people that I'm I'm pretty cool just chilling at home. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty cool just being very content with one or two friends. But I open my world up to our community, and just you know, I wanted to tell you while you were telling me your story about you know meeting everybody this is the most welcoming community I have ever belonged in. It is regardless of you starting when you were in your 20s, your 30s or your 40s. The minute that you open yourself up to this world, because either you're passionate about being a fan or being a part of the community that creates, open arms, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's where introverts get to go to be extroverts, you know, yeah. it's where you get to open up and, you know, be however you feel happy being. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's where I've met family. People I know will be family yeah. for years. Exactly. Right. It was it was a magical year. I tell the story all the time. People probably get bored of it. But it was a magical year for me it was 2015 mm. when I went out to Motor City Comic Con in Michigan. And that's when I met Source Point Press. And that's oh. when I met all these people who would become my family for the past six years, who we would be grinding the con circuit all across North America together, Mm -hmm. crashing on each other's couches, you know, piling into smelly cars and vans together. And just, you know, how many hungover breakfasts and crappy, greasy whole diners, you know, just, it, it, it was just, it's so great, man. It's so awesome. And I hope it comes back one day. <laughs> you, you kind of feel very, very rock star about that. You know what I mean? You're just touring with a bunch of boys, but instead of instruments, it's comics. Really is. Yeah. It's what so much it? more yeah. cooler. And being an introvert though, do you find, cause I've met a lot of people who got into podcasting, who used mm-hmm. it as a tool to help themselves express themselves better and be more comfortable with, with speaking. Was that the case for you at all? 
there's a little bit of that because I find that it's <laughs> like the true Gemini that I am, I suppose, is that there's different parts of me that different people get to know, you know, and I think there's a certain part that people just know me as host Joey, you know, but then work Joey is completely different, but it's also the way that, you know what, there's a different, there's a, there's an art of conversation to podcasting that I would have never fathomed you know, being (laughs) experienced in even, or maybe even one day perfecting, you know? So, you know, it's a long shot, but I'm going to take it, but it certainly helped me to be a little bit more articulate and be a little bit more open to winging it sometimes. It's good to hear. I've gotten lazy over the years, man. Like I remember in the beginning for the first while trying to be as properly articulate as I possibly could and not saying my ums and my yas. And I got to a point where I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm just, I, I um a lot. You know, that's my big crutch. You can find that everybody's got a vocal crutch. There'll be one word or a sentence or a sound or something. that's like oh. the last hardest one to kick. You know what mine is? It's I'm annoyed just saying it right now. It's the word essentially. I can't stop saying essentially. (laughs) And like the first few times that I saw myself in camera, I was just like, why am I blinking so much? Like, what does everybody blink that much? There's so many things you start to like pick and oh, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. That's and you know what? I think I actually the show got a little more popular when I stopped caring. And, it, and I kind of really relaxed and was just more myself, you know, because I'm not, you know, I, I grew up and I'm pretty articulate and well-spoken, but I'm also an extremely chronic pot smoker. And it just <laughs> makes it, it makes you not quite as, you know, articulate as you could may be. But I don't care anymore. I just don't. You know, if I'm having fun in the conversation, as long as they're understanding what I'm saying, they're not going to care if I'm umming and awing, you know. Well, you know what? Like there this is your brand you know and I was uh, I was just a guest star in the the true north podcast you know right, John, right? oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah he's a whole other kind of podcaster yeah. you know and and I, I and, and heroes world boys they're a whole other kind of you know podcaster so I know it's kind of like when I go to these podcasts it almost kind of seems like I'm just chilling in your living room and I know the vibe in, in Jay's place. And I know the vibe in John's place. Do you know what I mean? And Absolutely. I yeah. That's the aura, you know? That's what it is. That's what everybody's, like, I was noticing, I was watching you on Heroes last night. And you got your snowball all set up and your screen. And, you know, it's just mm-hmm. framed so nicely well. And it's all bright oh, and nice. clean and nice, you know? And it was just like, you know, it, it, it's a calming, it's just a calming visual, to be honest, you know? Your pretty really? face just sitting there beside- my snowball mic <laughs> it is it is it's so nice it's almost like a like a like a nice clean droid that you'd see on a brand new like rebellion ship or something you know what's funny um there's actually a little tape here i'm gonna send you a picture of it after but it actually says leia on it oh. <laughs> because there were three so comics think we had three main mics and I, I hated mixing up the chords. So I'm like, guys, we have to name these mics. So I got Leia and Cyril and Jeff, my dear, dear friends who are getting married very, very soon. They Aww. were in the podcast. Um, they have Luke and Han. Oh, that's cute. So tell me a little bit what happened there. Was that just something that, you know, you try, that got started out and then, you know, you went other ways or what Comic- happened there with Comics Inc.? Yeah. So Comics Inc., you know, I, I was surprised that he even made that much friends. I was literally, I was an Instagram account, you know, and I was reviewing random comics and box sets and toys. Okay. And eventually, you know, a, a bunch of people that were um, commenting on stuff started to become my online friends, just like how you started. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there were some of them that were like, how, how do you kind of, what, what do you envision for Comics Inc. and stuff? And I was like, well... I kind of wanted this to be a documentary, you know, and I wanted to ask the question, like one simple question and tour around a whole bunch of like comic book stores and comic book personalities to ask the question, is the, are comic books going to survive this decade or technically the century now? But that was the question that I was going to answer is print's going to die. Right. You know? And um, I just started getting these followers and I started getting people that were voluntarily like asking me, hey, I want to be a part of the, you know, this whole thing that you're doing. And the next thing you know, I had a team of seven people. (laughs) I was like, 
yeah, what yeah. happened? You know, and uh, but you know, everybody eventually, because I was a pretty laissez faire leader, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, kind of just let everybody run the ball a little bit, but then everybody's lives just started changing as well. And then I took a break um, from Comics Inc. and started joining the Gotham Central crew. Mm-hmm. You know, so I started yeah. working there full time. I was doing social media for Carlos, and I was also, you know, just kind of one of the boys doing the comic stuff and doing a little bit more like event management, managing for them. Yeah, just getting as involved as you can, right? Yeah, I I took off like my corporate world. I absolutely had no corporate world at that time. I was just full time in Gotham and. That was it, you know? It's great. It's great to get these shots and these chances, right? That's why I just took the last three months off because I was like, you know what? I don't want to climb trees right now. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to make comic books and give comic books away. And, you know, and this was supposed to be a big year, 2020. What a big year it is for a shit show. Well, Source Point, this was supposed to be the big year for Canada. We were going across the country. We were all set up, right? I squeezed in uh, Vancouver in in oh, February. Yeah. And we sold out every goddamn thing on the table. It oh. was a huge success. And then in April, we were supposed to go to Calgary. Uh-huh. And that's when ev- that, everything had gotten shut down by then. So this year, you know, turns into a write-off, which should have been a grand, you know, comic selling adventure across mm-hmm. the goddamn country. But, yeah. uh, you know, I think of hopefully eventually if, if society doesn't fall apart, we'll get to do it again one day. Right. I feel like, I feel like slowly Robert Kirkman is actually writing our real lives now. <laughs> right. Right. And it's weird. It was weird in the beginning when everybody all like jumped online because all of a sudden everybody was doing what I did. And all of a sudden everybody had a show or was trying to interview each other and talking to each other. And all these podcasts started flying out of the ether and I was like, this is overwhelming. And it it kind of turned me off a little bit. And uh, I I took a break. And I took like a month off. And I didn't do any shows. And I was like, I, I'm just not feeling it. And I don't like to force it, right? Exactly. I love to just, I only have the conversation if I'm going to enjoy the conversation or find it interesting. If I'm not in the mood, it just can't happen. And I wasn't in the mood for like a month. And... I was watching and it was bugging me and I was watching all these shows. And then I started realizing I was seeing a formula happen Mm -hmm. and I was seeing how, like, like you were saying before, how everybody, you know, who's been around for a while, I've been doing it for a bit, has their voice, has their place, has kind of figured out what they want to say and how they're going to say it. And all I was seeing was people just doing it the exact same way and saying the exact same thing for, Mm -hmm. you know, like a month or two. And then that's when I knew that's when I was like, you know, what's missing me. (laughs) <laughs> like my voice like okay it's gotten homogenized now yeah it's time for me to get back in there and not give a shit again so yeah. that's when I started you know having fun and doing it for fun again right and was like if anybody happens to want to jump on and watch the fun sure but I'm gonna you know I, this podcast will never die it will never ever die I will well, proclaim that now I'll be 100 years old doing this goddamn podcast even if it's technically not the last one standing right here right now um but yeah yeah i know i was gonna say that like it's i don't do you like it though do you do you like that there's so many new shows now or is it one of those things where you're like oh my god like enough i don't consider it because I would be hypocritical to ever judge anybody for doing anything in this manner because I have always preached that anybody can do it and everybody should do it. Mm -hmm. You know, even if nobody listens, even if you just are making recordings for your grandchildren in the future, like I think everybody should hit record and talk, whether Mm -hmm. it's to themselves or with someone. I think this is a, an important style of keeping record. Yeah, I think so. And, and you can get a lot from it, right? And the future can get a lot from it and you get a lot out of just doing it and having the conversation and enjoying the conversation. So yeah, it'd be hypocritical of me as much as I do get annoyed at seeing people doing it for say money, because I've seen a lot of people who are just doing it to try to be the next big YouTube show and make some cash. But you know, that, that's cringe, though. It, it is cringe, but it's to me, it's worth having if we can stay free. 
as yeah. long as anybody can do this and it's easy to do and there are no restrictions and no FCC type crap, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I don't care. As much as it personally does irk me, yeah, just out of the code of, of pod ethics, I guess I came from in my head. Sure. Um, you know, but I've had to adjust that over the years because I thought all, all podcasts should always be free. I went through a big period of that. But then I realized, you know, that there's certain certain people have a certain audience. And if that audience is willing to throw those few shekels to support somebody able to do this all the time, then yeah. absolutely, why not, right? Especially when it is fairly cheap. I pay five bucks a month to hear every day Ralph Report, the Ralph Report. Like right. Ralph Garman gives me a daily morning show podcast for five bucks a month. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. You know, I've learned well, that's okay. Yeah, the, it's another thing too, because I think people now, definitely more now than ever, we're all trying to find our creative side, you know? And I think that being in the corporate world for so long, you're kind of like, enough's enough, man. Like there's mm -hmm. only so much paper pushing that I can do. There's only <laughs> phone calls that I can pick right. up and all that kind of stuff. And I think once people find their their family like well, how we're doing it you know there's you know sports podcasters and there's a whole bunch of other genres of people doing podcasts and all that kind of stuff and and video cast and twitch is really big now as well um they kind of want to do that and never want to do their corporate jobs anymore no more clark Kent jobs just superman jobs now right you know? so yeah. you got to put food on the table and, you know, if, if you can learn to be okay with the balance, I'm lucky in the way that I do. I don't have a corporate job. I have a really cool job that I enjoy. I've been yeah. doing it for 20 years and I get to You're play like Tarzan. A walk. Yeah, I get to play Tarzan all day. Like, I can't complain, right? And, yeah. you know, I've, I've had to learn over the years how to balance that out with the other passions because I was a little art kid. I was a fat little drama kid. Really? Right? Oh, yeah. That's Me? all I did was play. And, uh, dude, I had hair in high school that Edward Scissorhands would have been jealous of. That's amazing. Like pure, cure Robert Smith style, you know, hair. I had the black trench coat. Sometimes I'd wear silver pants. I would, you know, I was, I was as goth as goth came in the 90s. And all I did was plays and drama and art. That's all I cared about. Mm -hmm. But then I got a little older and I discovered what partying was about. And oh, no. I partied away too many of these opportunities. But through podcasting uh -huh. look what i've been able to recapture right huh? i've been able to go from like the very first episode i went in the basement i hit record got stoned with my friend and we talked bullshit mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. just because i did that that one night it has led to me being uh you know involved in comic creation and publishing it has led to yeah. you know Who you knew? know comic-con panel coordination it's led to insane yeah. things like i never thought i'd get to just you know chill and have a whiskey with a fucking celebrity because i hit record one night it's mm -hmm. unbelievable what it led to so that's why everybody needs to be able to right? and it's not up to me to judge your reasons why but man everybody should do this right yeah you know what my version of that you know hitting the record button once kind of thing I remember my first thing that I was kind of conceiving Comics Inc. was I was doodling on a napkin and I love these like little Sharpie felt pens. Mm -hmm. And I literally just was drawing the Comics Inc. logo and I was just circling the circle part of the Comics Inc. logo. And I'm like, is this going to be an audio thing or is this going to be a video thing or is this going to be whatever kind of visual? And I just thought of it, you know, and it was one of those things where I kind of like, I, I don't know how to make this come true. I don't know anybody. I've had the same friends forever and none of them are into this kind of stuff. Right. So I just did it on my own, you know? And my first episode zero, because I promised Stadium Comics and it was um, um, Kevin and Ricky Lima that I interviewed for the very first time. And we were hovered over the Shoppers World counter at that point. Yeah. I promised them that they were going to be my episode one. But then I realized I need to intro myself and I didn't intro myself at all at that point. So my episode zero was me hovered over my kitchen appliances because I needed a stand for my mic. <laughs> there was, you know, um, like pots and pans, rice cooker, magic bullet, everything. I was just, I was just talking to them. Right. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's doing it. Like that's the thing. Like I never had a team doing this. 
And in a way, I'm kind of glad because I've got to a learn how to do so many things because of it. Like when I started podcasting, I could barely use Facebook. This is back in like 2011, 2012, right? Yeah. And now I, I've built websites. Mm -hmm. I know how to audio edit and engineer audio. Like, yeah, who would have thought, right? And it's from just, it's from a, it's, it's, it, it wasn't to get to the end game either. The joy was in the learning of it. It really it was. was. It was a journey. Yeah. Spending countless nights, sleepless nights on YouTube, mm -hmm. just learning and getting frustrated. Plenty oh, of times yeah, wanting to throw your so. laptop through the fucking wall, right? It's... You have no idea. I had my drama with SoundCloud. I had my drama <laughs> with a whole bunch of like, oh, I need to get this connector because I have a Mac. So there's a toggle thing for it. And the <laughs> countless arguments with exes of, are you going to sleep yet? Right, right. Yeah, oh, no, one more hour, one more hour. God. See, I loved the editing. Mm -hmm. Like I got obsessed with the editing. And one yeah. thing I did, if you listen to the first say, 10 20 episodes of this show yeah you're gonna hear sound effects throughout the entire show you and just what, sounded like a dj remix no it's more like uh say a subject came up yeah and somebody talked about say star trek or something right uh -huh. i would cut a clip in there of somebody saying something from star trek Oh, right. Okay. Like okay. just just little sound bites throughout the thing to like embellish and punch things people were Ooh, saying or funny, but it took hours because uh -huh. I I didn't just like I first had to go to YouTube, find the clip, cut the clip, download the clip, edit the clip, and then, you know, then put the clip into the show. And it was like a nine step process that was just killing me, killing me. You know, what's crazy is I that gave up. It's probably like a three second process. Oh, you know what it is now? Now it's ridiculous, especially with all this crap going on. Um, where did the advance uh, watch the? Yes. See, now it's as easy as me like hitting one button and me hitting, say, this one. Waka waka. Right? Like, yeah. And that would have walls and all this kind of crap. And we can do 30 minutes. That's amazing. Times. It's good times, man. But uh, that all leads us to mm -hmm. something that we have to talk about, because I need you to explain some things to me. Sure. And how a few things came about. Mm -hmm. So a mutual friend of ours, Mr. Yaron Baton. Yes. Baton. Mm -hmm. Baton. How would you Yaron say Baton. How does he say Yaron Baton, right? I used, I used to say it wrong all the time. I used to say Yaron because he was part of the Gotham pull list. And oh, then, right, yeah, right. And then I was just like, Oh my God! All these years, I was calling you. I here. I always knew it was it was Yaren, but I I forget if it's Baton or Batan. Sometimes <laughs> I I have the trouble with the with the last name. Anyways, he made a movie, yeah. and it was a movie called Heroes Manufactured, mm -hmm. and this was a documentary that followed several artists and creators uh, through con life mm -hmm. and uh, the experience of a of a Canadian Comic Con basically. Yeah. Um, Ty Templeton mm -hmm. featured uh, Shane Kirschenblatt. Yeah. Um, who else was in there? Was Andy S in there? Andy Stanley? Her. Oh, uh, no, I don't remember. I don't think so. No. Who else was in there? The the movie. Um, yeah. Stan Lee was in it. Yeah, there was. He had a, you got to think of Stan Lee girl. in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. It's crazy. So this movie comes out and uh, gets around. Yeah. And progresses to a point of which now I don't understand what happened. Okay. Because he did come to me, and I know that at one point we were talking at a con, he said he was working on a sequel. And then yeah. that sequel, he said he was turning into a TV show. Yeah. And then very quickly became an actual TV show, mm -hmm. um, which I was confused at first if it was like a documentary, just pure styles or what was going to be happening. Mm -hmm. um, so explain to me, help me understand the transition and what's occurred here. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the host of the the show and uh okay. then the podcast has come out of it that you're hosting but having the other host on lay it out for me joey so many things going on yeah so um i actually knew about uh heroes manufactured uh the movie the documentary while i was in gotham and i thought that was super cool it was kind of like being in a con without actually smelling the aroma of a con nice <laughs> um but it's a perk if any yeah yeah um and i and i was just like oh my god it's like seeing all my friends in a movie 
you know, like I, Andrew Thomas was in it. You know what I mean? Like I just right, yeah. kept on seeing the lot and uh, even, and then Yaron used to, you know, come out in Gotham as well and chill with us and get his books. And um, he, probably like a year after uh, we started catching up with each other. And he was basically like, what are you kind of doing now in, in the pop culture world? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> you know, um, after I left Gotham, I started working somewhere else. Um, I wasn't doing any podcasts or anything like that, but I knew, I knew that I wanted to get back, but I knew I also needed a break. Exactly what you were going through. I almost, several, yeah. yeah, I had this kind of, um, I had this experience where I actually pop cultured out you know what I mean? Maybe it was because I was, um, I was surrounded by it all the time that I started really taking things for granted. Um, I started to kind of like, not, not that I wasn't interested in it, but I started to get really indifferent about a lot of things. So, you know, me and him get to talking and then he tells me that he's made this TV show and I didn't really know what to expect, but he was like, you know that you were kind of part of it, right? Because we filmed it in Gotham too which uh, the artist alley part of it was during that time that me and you were working in Indie Fest where you, was, you were with Source yeah. and I was, um, I, I, was, I was the, you know, managing in Gotham at that point. He's interviewed me twice and I don't know if it's ever ended up anywhere. I don't know. So why. Yaren, if you're out him. there watching, what, did I just hit the floor? Did He's I probably just hit- in the comment section right now because he knows that this is happening. Got to get but- you. Got to get you on the show. You're long overdue as well. Yes. I think he's been on. I think I've recorded with him at a show. I've done like a interview with him like on the floor, but mm-hmm. I've never had like a sit down chat with him. So I'll have to get his point of view. Yeah, but he, sorry, we're, yeah, we're he's, getting he's off. Yeah, he's important but- people. He's important people to chat with. Um, so he so- just he's, he's like, what are you up to? Yeah, exactly. So then I, I did tell him because at that point I was actually talking to a few friends from like a couple of friends from Comics Inc. And I was also talking to uh, another friend of mine, uh, Ryan, that did uh, the Mr. Mr. Multiverse podcast as well. And we've always wanted to work together. And I was really trying to figure out a way that I could amalgamate all of my friends to start doing this again. But I knew that it wasn't in me to make it work the way that I thought that I could make it work so lo and behold two weeks after I started having meetings with like all my friends Yaron and I had that talk and he was like I actually need someone who's like comic savvy you know and I'm like I might know someone right 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 (laughs) and uh that's kind of like my whole thing with him happened so there's technically two heroes manufactured things going on right now soon to be three the first one is obviously the TV show that is now in Amazon Prime, came out about right. a month ago. And uh, that is, uh, did you see any of it yet? I haven't seen the show on Prime yet, but I've just yeah. been watching you guys on the Facebook Live. On the Live. So yeah. if you if you do have sit Prime, down and do a binge. I do have Prime, oh, yeah. yeah. So I gotta sit down and do a binge. It. You're certainly gonna like it because it has, um, it's, it goes from Toronto Fan Expo all the way to San Diego Comic Con, so cool. every episode is your life. <laughs> every right. episode is a different con in North America, and right. you get the feel of it. You get the different guests. You get to kind of see how it differs and how how very much the same it is essentially. See, I did it again. I said essentially. Um, so <laughs> it fit though. It made sense. It was good usage of the word. So who gives a fuck? Yeah. So. Um, the, that whole thing came out and simultaneously he was doing the Heroes Manufactured Live where he was um, interviewing like indie creators, mm-hmm. right? So after, so now it's gotten so big that there's departments of shows. Heroes Manufactured Live is Yaron interviewing creators. And then there's uh, the second show is Movie Minutes and that is hosted by Philip Moran who is the host of the TV show. Now, so, where, who is this fellow? Where did he come from? What magical cauldron was he cooked up in? <laughs> so he, him and uh, Yaron actually met in TIFF. And, okay, uh, yeah, all right. He's an actor. Um, uh, and, for anyone unfamiliar, that's the Toronto International Film Festival. Film Festival, yes. So he's an actor, okay. Yeah, he's an actor. So um, that's why, you know, his expertise in like the movie industry 
fit him with more of the movie minutes show where they construe like superhero movies and sci-fi movies for sure uh, so they do reviews with that the third show that came up was me so that's comics vault where we obviously talk about comics and we talk about the new stuff and we talk about you know top fives of stuff and all that kind of thing and um the third show to sorry the fourth show to come out is game changers because the gaming community is insane like it is bigger than it ever was before with esports and all that kind of stuff you know it's gotten to a point now where i think that we're having difficulty coming up with names for the split of the gaming community mm. because for the past 10 years if you were to say to gaming to me i think video games of course. but board games and card games and magic games and and tabletop games have yeah. gotten so big now yeah that you know, they almost need a, a designation unto themselves. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like the, the Dungeon and Dragoners, and then there's like the Katanners. Right. Like, it's, it's tons, man. So but, much stuff. But you're talking strictly gaming. Strictly you're video games for that now. That shows gaming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For right. now. So they did stuff like no. And who hosts uh, that one? Uh, that one is Addy. And okay. Addy E is um, our boy that works in a, in, a, in a game store. And he's also a performer. He's an actor as well. Nice. Um, so everyone's kind of like, we're kind of like our own Justice League, you know? Like I'm in charge of the comics, you know? The, and then and, and Phil is in charge of the movies and Addy is in charge of Game Changers. And the big exciting news that I did want to tell everybody in your podcast, at least, was that oh. Holly Wolf is joining our team. I'm okay. Yeah, a Holly Wolf is going to be doing cosplay. So I'm unfamiliar with no, Holly that's Wolf. Fine. Please, please don't be offended by no, my not at all. familiarity. But this is—is is this a local cosplayer? No, she's big, man. She's, oh, okay. Yeah, she's she's big things. Like you know, when when we table, we're right. actually the littler people <laughs> because she's the she's one of those uh, cosplayers like alongside, um, uh, you know people with like really big photo shoots and they have their own kind of man i could name you three cosplayers it. that aren't my friends do you know what yeah. i mean like mm -hmm. unless i know them personally i just i just i don't know no that's fine i mean i'm not part of the cosplay community so it's new to me too but you know she's pretty big in it and she's very passionate about what she does and she's yeah, been yeah. Cosplay for so so long um i'm interested to actually see what kind of show uh, they're going to come up with with her um because i have no idea what cosplay is about i i, I do not have the self-confidence to be able to pull off a cosplay so. i get tempted occasionally when i think of something cool and uh i, I walked into michael's the other day i yeah. took my little art rat into michael's because it's his favorite place on earth mm -hmm. and uh they had a cosplay section they had a they had a cosplay corner and it was all like foam and like glue guns and like all different shaped molding foamy stuff. Uh, all the crap you would need to make whatever costume you wanted to make right right there at Michael's. That is important information to know for everybody watching because Halloween is coming up. That too. Do you think we're going to have a Halloween? How do you think they're going to handle that? We're going to have a Halloween. <laughs> I heard a great idea where they should, and I honestly, this may have been a joke, but I think all kids should dress up, stand in their front yards, mm -hmm. and we should all drive around in our cars and throw candy just at throw them. Throw candy at them? Just throw candy oh. at them in the front yard. They got to, so you know, what else are we going to do? We can't let kids go door to door, can we? Cool. First of all, kids got to toughen up these days, you know, we grew up in the streets of Toronto, you know, they, they had no they diseases back in the day in Toronto. What are you no. talking about? Oh my God. No, they, we need to toughen them up. Like, I think it's going to be one of those things where it becomes a tradition and it's like to see the kid who wears the coffee crisps because the coffee crisps is like the hardest one there. You know, but yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. That's gonna be it. It's like five points if you hit the Batman kids and <laughs> if you hit like the Tinkerbell little Total Halloween point system. For, yeah. and, the, and the kids aren't allowed to move, they got to stand no. there stationary. No, they like, gotta take it, you just gotta <laughs> do it. They just gotta take it. That's it. I like it. I like it. So, <laughs> Comics Vault is it uh, conversational, interviews, reviews? What are you doing? All of it. 
So right now it's more like me and Yaron, or maybe I have a special guest that, you know, talk about comics, but right now uh, we've been doing, we have like five episodes and it's many different kinds of topics. So the, the first episode that I did was review deceased. I don't know if you read that one, but. I read some, but yeah, but I got, I got to get through it more focused, like, but uh, I heard good things though. It's good because it's very, uh, it's very relevant to the times right now. Yeah. Um, so disease is good. Um, I did also uh, a spotlight with free comic book day because clearly free comic book day is not happening the way it usually happens. No. Um, so I kind of talked a little bit about the origins of it, you know, kind of let people know who haven't been in free comic book day, what it's like. To That's be in cool. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we did like, uh, you know, MCU movies, we did, um, yeah, we do that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm working on a Negan episode right now. So I'm learning how to produce stuff as well. That's fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's the part, like, I'm so behind on regular things, like just reading comics enough that I could never sit down and pre-prepare my show. And sometimes I think about how I'd love to. I'd love to do like a soup type show where I could sit down and have like screenshots ready and tell stories that happened or, you know what I mean? Like sure. a semi-produced scripted show. Mm-hmm. No. Nah. Just no, no, well, no maybe time. That's you, man that's not you and then people are going to be like yeah. whoa like the show like that comes out and it's like jay's really i yeah. would do it like me though like i wouldn't try too hard i wouldn't be all like hey you know and yeah. i wouldn't write jokes but sometimes i do because i'll go through phases there are times when i won't have guests on for a couple you know episodes and i'll just have a friend on because mm-hmm. I, I get in that mood and i'm like you know what i don't want to talk to somebody about them i just want to talk to somebody about other shit but if I have a guest on and get too much into other shit, I feel bad because in a part, I know they're there to promote whatever they're talking about sure. or, you know, get into the comic book. But that's why I usually try to half it up. You know what I mean? I try to spend the first, say, half hour getting to know them, just hanging out, shooting the shit. Yeah. And, then, you know, last 30, 20 minutes, you know, I'll get into whatever the fuck they, you know, are whining about people giving them money for. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, we move on. But it's it's been a blast man it's been fun to watch for you and i'm glad you're coming back man i'm glad you're you're stepping into that seat and this seems like you got a really good team and you're all getting along and gelling well over there yeah yeah no it's good i mean it's it's all different kinds of departments so right now we're all just doing it you know in our own homes i'm kind of in between homes right now because we're, i'm supposed to be moving very soon hence right why there's no pop culture in my background ever where <laughs> there usually would be I don't know just a small fortress Maximus and at least a transformer or two uh, you know behind me just like what fortress you have fortress Maximus here. have you watched the new one which the one the Netflix the uh oh, yeah it, it's good uh define good no <laughs> um you know what here's the thing the the animation was done well okay like it looks good however and i talked to i i was in a pot i guest starred in the heroes world podcasts because he knew i was a big transformers girl but we didn't like prime in it we did not like optimus none of us liked optimus prime in it and he's kind of supposed to be the matrix of leadership center and heart of the show and he was the most disappointing one out of uh, all the Autobots there. Interesting. So I think it's worth a watch because you need to know how stuff falls apart and why. It is a prequel, right? It is a prequel. So it's kind of prime before he really becomes like full leader prime? No, he's actually leader, leader prime. And that's why there was a lot of disappointing things about it. My boy Ultra Magnus was in it. And he was did, he sweet yes uh he but he did some shadiness as well you know so i am I'm, I'm gonna watch for the second part to come out and you have of- me intrigued i haven't heard anybody put it this way all i've heard is it's badass dude so it's nice to get a like actual informed uh opinion and and review on the situation so now yeah. i'm more intrigued to watch it it's you know what um did you grow up watching the g1 stuff oh yeah oh yeah Oh, okay, right. well, you know, our blocky, colorful robots, mm-hmm. their personalities weren't really there. You know, like, mm-hmm. th- this was not the prime that I thought he would become, that he would evolve into. Same thing with Ultra Magnus. Um, 
Megatron and Starscream is probably like the most congruent with their G1 selves, I guess, right. their, you know, personalities with themselves. But I think they tried to grow up the story, but I don't think that they stuck with continuity and personalities of the bots. Right. Interesting. You know? So I just yeah. kind of thought that maybe it would have been, re- you know what? Good point. I wish that the comic book writers from Boom Studios and IDW, the people who do the crossovers with like the the uh, the right, turtles yeah. and and Power Rangers, I would and, and Transformers. I wish they wrote this because they're doing a really good job writing those comics right now. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like a lot of the crossovers that happen with that stuff. Well, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. See, that's what a good reviewer does, kids. A good reviewer sucks you in and makes you interested in wanting to see something. Even, even if it isn't an overwhelmingly positive review, not yeah. necessarily a super negative review, but an informed, mm-hmm. interested uh, review. Joey, I would expect no less from you. Is there a time uh, for everything? Like, how does this work? Like, are they all YouTube shows? Are they all, is there a central, no. is it a central like website? How do we find all of that? Yeah, sure. So we go on Facebook Live first, and that that gets uploaded onto YouTube like three days after, approximately. But basically, the shows kind of come on like bi-weekly. So, you know, one week, it's going to be Movie Minutes and, you know, Comics Vault. And then the next week, it's, it, it's going to be, you know, a cosplay show and uh, uh, Game Changers and we kind of just switch it up depending on, you know, uh, the topic that we're going to talk about. That's smart because that's not going weekly is going to give you like a little bit of a break in there and you mm-hmm. might not burn out like we occasionally tend to do. Right. It's uh, um, <laughs> Heroes World. Um, Andre. Yes. And- Andre and John. Yeah. And they own a shop. They do. Yeah. So they're the boys over at Markham. They've owned that shop for like, I think, 20 years. Um, so they're over at Warden. Mm-hmm. Right on. That's cool. Yeah. We'll have to visit the visit that shop someday. That's one I have yet. I saw a new comic shop today. Really? On Plains Road. I don't know if it's new or if it's been there, but I've never heard of it. What is it called? Ardvark. That's a comic shop? Ardvark Comics. It's on Plains Road East. Um, out in Hamilton. It's like Kings Road and Plains Road. And yeah, and I drove by it today on my way back to my shop at work and I saw it and it was Ardvark Comics. And I was like, where the hell did that come from? So I got to pop in there and say hello and make sure there's some source point press on the shelves. You know what I mean? Picks because I, I never go to Hamilton, but you know what? You Hamilton people, every single time I meet someone from the Hammer, they're always like, we're from the mountainside. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's less embarrassing to be up on the mountain. Oh, I don't know what that means at all. If you're going to be in Hamilton at all, you want to be up on the mountain if possible. Um, why did they, no, why did they say it's so hoity-toity? Hamilton, it's it's more not that it's hoity-toity up here, but it's so not hoity-toity downtown. Mm. Like, like Hamilton's got a, some serious issues with the downtown core. Uh, the homelessness... Uh, problem is out of, it's so really? out of control it's not it's like it makes toronto look like it has no homeless like yeah hamilton right downtown in the center lake square there's some serious problems with uh, support for those with mental illness and homelessness and yeah. it's a real problem but if you get outside of the city a bit i've learned in my year that i've lived here after moving out from mississauga a year ago um is there there is some beautiful beautiful stuff around as far as historical sites and trails and waterfalls hamilton's got a shitload of waterfalls no water also is hamilton the place that has the the old um plane museum or something like that yeah that's where hamilton yeah. comic-con has happened uh that's the it. past few years it's kind of neat you know going in and you know yeah that is true that's where um my boys from high school so shout out to simone and Akeem right now, I don't know if you guys are watching, but they hustled some, I don't know, some comic vendor for me to get the full run of Electra from Bendis. Oh, nice. Thank you, boys. That, was, that was our back in the day adventures. Well done. Well done. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Before we go, you got any recommendations? You got any things you want to shout yeah. out and make sure that people check out? What comics are you reading right now? What are you liking? 
Well, right now I am doing my Negan episode very, very soon. So I'm going to be doing Negan, but I'm also very excited to read the three Jokers. So the new Batman book, right? I'm also reading the oh, White Boy Faye book. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I got to tell you about drama after. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm reading that. I'm reading the crossovers and I have to tell you like the small bit funny story that I think I lost a little bit of my street cred in the comic book community because I went to Altered State because that's where my pull is right now. During lunch. Really? At Altered States? Yeah, because uh, I, I used to live in Clarkson as well for what? a small bit of what? time. I know, you were there too, but- I, This is L5J, what, what? I mean, uh-huh. this show spent 10 years in Clarkson. Of yeah, I was a Clarkson a, kid. I was a, I was a Truscott for, resident for- Truscott in Southdown, yo, yo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's- Park Royal, is that where that's- you're at? No, I was um, at the back of Sunrise. Yeah, you know Sunrise, the the breakfast place. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Barsuda. That's my that's guy. where I just moved from. Are you serious? Yeah, that's right insane. behind the subway. My unit was one on the end, right behind the subway there. That's insane. Yeah, at, I, uh, I was walking distance from there, so um, I went to Altered State. Yeah. I said, as I said, that's where my pull is. And so yeah. I still work a little bit close by there. And uh, as I was telling, I think it was John working there. And I was like, uh, yeah, can you just add something to my pull? And he was like, yeah, of course. I was going to email you, but I forgot. And then he goes, yeah, yeah, what is it? And I just kind of like leaned into him and I said, can you just put uh, Transformers versus My Little Pony on my <laughs> <laughs> And then he starts laughing. And I'm like, yeah, I know, whatever. And uh, my buddy Daniel from the other side of the fucking store goes, bro, don't forget your My Little Pony. I was like, yeah, no, I already told them. <laughs> Nice, nice. We're not talking hardcore uh, uh, musician, Daniel, are we? No, in no, person? my boss, Daniel, actually. Oh, okay, right yeah. on. And I was yeah, like, no, David. Uh, watch my street cred, you know? I've been going to that shop since I was 13. Really? Yeah, Dave and Doug started it 26, 27 years ago. Jeez. And it was a few units down from where it is right now. With the big mortgage sign? That's yeah, or, to be. originally it was in a different spot, but in the same area. Then oh. it moved across the street where, you know, where the delicatesse is? Mm-hmm. It was in there. Oh, I've never been there. When then it, it moved from, and it was really tiny there. But I remember that was the location where it was when the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one came out. Because oh I remember God. walking into that shop and seeing it and being like, what the fuck is this right it was so yeah. new and so fucking different we fell in love with it instantly then after that they moved to inverness the the green plaza on the other yeah. side of the tracks there and that's where they had the fire do you know about the fire I didn't know about a fire no the rubicon restaurant next door the stove blew up it uh-huh. blew out the front window right on the lakeshore road right so oh, it yeah. caught on fire and the guys lost two hundred thousand comic books because the firewall that was on was the classic wall. Plus that week, they happened to be the week when they were rebagging and boarding all the back issues. So they were all sitting out unprotected and they all got smoke damage. Right? Protection is important, people. Insurance is also very important. Yeah. So oh, they took the hard insurance hard. money and reopened where they are now. Uh-huh. So when they first opened a bunch of years back, 10 years, 11 years back where they are now, the shop was like empty. There's like nothing in there because all their stock had been destroyed. So they had to start buying up collections again because they still, to this day, mm. you will not find a better comic shop with better back issues than Altered States. Most oh. comic shops don't even deal with them now. But yeah. kids, if you want, if you're in Mississauga and anywhere in the GTA and you want back issues, get your asses over to Altered States. I'm going to back you on that because I have been trying to find for two and a half years now all my zatanna run Mm -hmm. and all of my black canary run and i have not found a place that i have found more than i think i've actually completed almost all of it i think i'm just missing like two issues of 
of they're the great book. for yeah. chunks man a lot of my star wars comic runs i got in chunks from them and i'll just be yeah. missing like one or two yeah so yeah good Super times awesome. in clarkson mm-hmm. uh good times on the internet good times making podcasts and selling yeah. comics and chatting with you joey thank you so much for joining me tonight uh, i hope we, we should do this more often man we really do oh but yeah. can, I, can i remind the people of elegant weapon to yes follow me on heroes manufactured follow me on facebook um it's it's just heroes manufactured you'll see it there there's a hero manufactured live and there's also a heroes manufactured indie creators feel free to share all of your stuff that you are originally doing whether you're a creator an illustrator a writer whatever you're doing go and share with the community we love seeing all of your work we love seeing all of your comments and you guys going into our live and commenting on our posts um, on YouTube, we are just heroes manufactured and uh, we make playlists depending on your, you know, uh, favorite stuff to watch. So mine is obviously the Comics Vault one. And I post all the things that I'm doing, everything that I'm guest starring at on Instagram and on Facebook at The Captain Canary. There you go, kids. It's a it's a cuter, smaller, more polished version of me. That's that's why you need to be following Joey here. Joey, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hopefully I can jump over to the other side of the tracks and show up on one of your shows one day, huh? Yes, please. Thanks, big bro. Excellent, kids. Uh, Everybody out there, be kind uh, to each other. Uh, Try to be helpful. Try to keep on going. Um, Again, we're proud of ourselves here in Canada doing so well, and we hope that America doesn't burn like it is. So to all our American brothers and sisters, hold on and try to get through this. Uh, but uh, yes, much love, one love. Other than that, kids, uh, that's all we're going to have this week on an elegant weapon. So take it easy. An elegant weapon for the more civilized classes. Good times. I did not know you were a Clarkson boy. Hell yeah. Uh, moved there when I was nine, man. And uh, yeah, totally. Absolutely. That's cool, man. I didn't know you were a Clarkson girl. How has that not come up, right? That was like, I mean, I lived there for a year because, man, like, can I just tell you chicks are crazy? I'm not going to date one of them 